Big people, this message is just for you. All right, admit it. You have a BB voice. Maybe you've never done it out loud, but you have one. Now is the time to bring it out of the shadows and into the light. My brand new book, Little Hedgehog Goes to School, is available right now. You heard that correctly. A Little Hedgehog picture book. I have been working on it for two years, and I think you are going to love it. You can fulfill your dream of voicing not only BB, but Little Hedgehog and, of course, Mr. Hedgehog by visiting littlestoriestinypeople.com forward slash books. You can also find it by searching for Little Hedgehog Goes to School on Amazon. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay, I hope you love it. Now, on to the show. This is Rhea. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I know, I know. I've been gone a while. I can explain. There are some very excellent reasons why it was so hard for me to share new stories with you the last couple of months. Here's what happened. I know it's unbelievable, but... I found news across the country in the new states. I know it was a long trip, especially for the donkeys and the ladybugs. It was madness. Then there was the infestation of worms. I didn't know you could have a worm infestation either. You really took me by surprise. But we did it. Also, all of my recording equipment was packed up and I couldn't access it. I had to stay out for months on end. And there you have it. Those are all of the completely understandable reasons why I couldn't share a new story with you until now. Did I hear a click? I think I just heard a click. <gasps> There is a studio spider up in the corner holding a tiny remote control. I mean, this doesn't make any logical sense, but I think that studio spider just fast-forwarded me. You can't fast-forward someone in real life, can you? Okay, just in case, let me tell you again what I was doing the last couple of months. So in a nutshell, Our family moved across the country to the new state. I know, it was a long trip, especially for the donkeys and the ladybugs. Hey! Oh, I have an email. <clears throat> Dear Rhea, we will keep fast-forwarding you until you get to the story. Enough of all the blah, blah, blah. Signed, the Studio Spider and Studio Beetle Noise Pollution Committee... Are you kidding me? Noise pollution? Huh. All right. Tiny people, I'll deal with this ridiculousness after the story. Let's get to it. Our story is called Little Hedgehog Writes a Book. Take it away, Sehedge. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. One more, BB. Here you go. Okay, one more. Here you are. I think one more should do it. By all means, BB said, handing Little Hedgehog another book. They were in Little Hedgehog's burrow, and Little Hedgehog was teetering on an ever growing stack of books. Can you reach it? Not quite. That was your last book, BB said. Little Hedgehog was perched on the now-swaying tower of books, attempting to say hello to an inchworm who was climbing up the burrow wall. Try to say hello now. Hello there, Little Hedgehog said, balancing on her tippy toes. The inchworm glanced over and stopped mid-inch. Did you talk to me? Yes. We were wondering where you are headed. Northwest, I believe. There's an inchworm gathering to be held in a hole over yonder. We are to discuss our progress in fundraising to finance a new stretching facility. 
little hedgehog and Bibi blinked. I'm afraid at this rate I may miss the buffet. That hole over yonder? Little Hedgehog asked, pointing a tiny paw at a nearly invisible hole in the ceiling of her room. That one, yes. Would you like some help so you don't miss the buffet? I live for buffets, Bibi muttered down below. That would be ideal, the inchworm said. Bibi, can you get my fishing pole? Bibi disappeared into the shadows and reappeared with Little Hedgehog's sparkly fishing pole. She handed it up, and Little Hedgehog grasped it in her tiny paw. Then, Little Hedgehog, still atop her pile of books, held out the end of the fishing pole for the inchworm to climb aboard. Something about this feels wrong, the inchworm muttered, but looked at Little Hedgehog's sweet expression, thought of the buffet, considered the importance of the new stretching facility, and inched aboard the very end of the fishing pole. Little Hedgehog carefully swung the pole upwards, carrying the inchworm along for the ride, and then pressed the end of it as close as possible to the hole in the ceiling. If I had just one more book on my pile here, I could get you all the way there. That's all right. This is close enough, the inchworm said. It inched off the end of the fishing pole, and found itself just a few inches from its destination. Thank you, it called, disappearing into the hole. You are welcome. Enjoy your buffet. Little Hedgehog leapt off the tower of books, and it collapsed to the floor, books sliding everywhere. Together, Little Hedgehog and Bibi picked up the books and returned them to the shelf. It's a good thing I had that fishing pole. Little Hedgehog said, her eyes twinkling. Certainly. Without it, I wouldn't have been able to help that inchworm. Too true. Without it, I would have needed a much higher tower of books. At the very least, one more book. (gasps) Baby! Yes, Little Hedgehog. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That if the forest farmer's market continues to have a surplus of onions, we might be headed towards another onion peeling festival, last held three years ago when the surplus of onions hit an all-time high. No. That your dad seems to be wearier than usual, which could indicate some sort of vitamin deficiency that he should have checked at his next well visit. No. Did I have witnessed my neighbor, Mr. Glooperville, carry different colored ladders into his burrow on four separate occasions? Yet I have never seen Mr. Glooperville leave his burrow with a ladder, which raises the question of whether Mr. Glooperville now has four large ladders inside his rather small burrow, and what a badger could possibly need more than one ladder to reach. No. I give up. Da, 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 da. We should write a book, Bibi blinked. Picture it, Bibi. Our names and a real book you can hold in your paws. It sounds sophisticated. Little Hedgehog's eyes sparkled with excitement. The acknowledgments page is always my favorite page in a book. Can we include one of those on which we mention by name all the animals who were integral to the book's creation and then add, you know who you are to capture all those who provided less tangible yet still important contributions? How could we not, BB? And also, we can host a party to celebrate our book's launch. Oh, we can have a band, and of course a firefly dance troupe, and can we have a spear-whittling corner? Of course, it's our book party. It was decided Little Hedgehog and Bibi would author a book. Their first act in book creation was to tell everyone they encountered that they intended to write one. They went outside in the cool night air, so they would be more likely to encounter someone. They heard sleepy cows in the distance. They heard laughter emanating from the weekly forest comedy night. They heard the forest choir practicing off in the other direction. 
they heard a caterpillar munching on leaves very close by. Mm, yum, yum. Little Hedgehog and Bibi turned their attention to the caterpillar. Hello! Greetings. Hi. How is tonight going for you? Mostly tasty, the caterpillar said with a mouth full of leaf. And you? Well, we do have some pretty big news. Okay. We, we are, are writing, writing a, a book. book. That's impressive. I've always wondered what it is like to write a book, the caterpillar said between bites. What is it like exactly? It's wonderful. It's motivating. The caterpillar smiled and went back to eating. Little Hedgehog and Bibi moved on. They came to Bibi's neighbor, the architect, Ms. Jams. She was out in her yard, polishing one of her architecture awards. Hi, Ms. Jams. Good evening, Ms. Jams. Ms. Jams peered at them in the darkness, trying and failing to remember who exactly they were. But she could tell that they were not there to deliver her nightly crossword puzzle. Uh, hi, Ms. Jams muttered. She pulled the award she'd been polishing close to her chest in a protective gesture and ducked into her burrow. They heard the door lock. I guess she's busy. She is clearly hard at work. Next, they ran into a tiny spider crawling on a leaf. We are writing a book. We are writing a book, Little Hedgehog and BB said after some pleasantries. The spider took a break from crawling to gaze up at them. What is a book? Little Hedgehog and Bibi's eyes gleamed. Oh, a book is magical. Educational. Inspiring. A book can transport you to a different time and place. It can take you on an adventure without even leaving the burrow. The spider continued to gaze up at them, periodically blinking its many eyes. A book can be entertaining, informative, transformational, explanatory, heartwarming, historically accurate. I don't get it, the spider said. It's rectangular and it has two thick covers and pages in the middle with words and sometimes pictures on them. The spider stared at them for a moment. My cousin Gregor has one of those. Bye. I have to go to spin class. Oh, okay. Farewell. The spider swung itself from the leaf to the ground and disappeared. Little Hedgehog and Bibi continued traipsing through the forest surrounding the burrow. The moon was full and it bathed everything in a soft light. The stars were twinkling. As they scampered along, daydreaming about their book, they heard the sound of a typewriter. As they neared the sound, they glimpsed a weasel crouched beneath a willow tree. She was typing away, a scowl set upon her furry face. They watched as she grimaced and tore her paws through the fur on her head in frustration as she glared at the page pinned in her typewriter. She appears to be in a state of flow. We should not disturb her. Good thinking, Bibi. Let's approach her silently, the way we practiced. Little Hedgehog's eyes gleamed. She thought back to when she'd asked Bibi to teach her how to reappear from the shadows. The first step is to imagine yourself as a warm breeze. A warm breeze is pleasant to the prickle. It is largely silent, but it is always moving. Got it, Bibi. Warm breeze. Little Hedgehog closed her eyes and imagined herself as a gentle wind. Then she opened her eyes just a touch and began to move. She launched into a twirl and tripped on a divot in the floor, then fell into a tiny house she and Bibi had built made of toothpicks and balls. Oops, I think I was more hurricane than breeze that time, Bibi. We'll work on it. Be a warm breeze, little hedgehog. I am a warm breeze. Little hedgehog and Bibi silently breezed over to the weasel, who was still tapping away at her typewriter. Soon, the two tiny hedgehogs were just inches away from her. 
They were shrouded in darkness. Clouds blotted out the full moon. What do we do now, BB? Perhaps we should make our appearance known. Shall we dare interrupt her state of flow? The typewriter stopped. They heard the weasel sigh heavily. <sighs> Fitzgerald, is that you? I told you, I'm not interested in selling scented socks, no matter what it might do for your upline. The clouds shifted, and Little Hedgehog and BB shuffled out of the shadows of the willow tree and into the moonlight. Hello! Greetings. The weasel stared at them. You're not Fitzgerald. I'm Little Hedgehog. I am BB. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The weasel stared at them, then sighed once more. <sighs> it's my own fault for setting up my office beneath a willow tree. All right, what are you selling? Hmm. Little Hedgehog and BB smiled. Oh, we aren't selling anything. My mom put up a sign outside our burrow that says, No burrow to burrow sales. She says that creatures that go burrow to burrow selling should instead spend their time making better products. You intrigue me, the weasel said, cocking her head as she looked at BB. Well then, shouldn't you two be swinging from tree branches or constructing river dams or joining the circus or whatever it is that hedgehogs do in their younger years? We are writing a book. We are writing a book. All this time, the weasel's paws were in midair, hanging with anticipation above the keys on her typewriter. Presently, she lowered her paws and pushed her typewriter out of the way. I see, the weasel said, crossing her paws over her chest. And how far have you gotten? How far? That is a pertinent question. So you haven't started, the weasel said, scowling more deeply. Not quite. Technically, we have not. They learned that the weasel, as they had suspected, was a writer. She had written and published several novels featuring molehills. Many creatures don't think much of molehills, but I see them as mountains of literary possibility. Wow! Fascinating. Upon learning of the weasel's breadth of experience in crafting books and sending them out into the forest, Little Hedgehog and BB pestered, ahem, they asked persistently, for her to share her writing process. Please, will you tell us? Please, please, will you we tell us? We would greatly please, appreciate you your insights. To make them stop, she relented. Fine. You start by writing your first draft. Okay. Sounds reasonable. It will be terrible. First drafts always are. Just get it down in the page. That's what you have to do. I see. Fascinating. Then you write your second draft, and your third, and your fifth. What about your fourth draft? Oh, that one was terrible. I just threw it out. I literally threw it out the window. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. Then there's the stage I like to call Traversing the Valley of Sorrows. Little Hedgehog and BB's eyes grew wide. That's the editing process. Editing? What exactly is editing? You can expect your prickles to thin during that time. You'll be getting a maximum of two hours sleep a day. My mom says I need at least 14 hours of sleep every day or I will develop restless paw syndrome. It runs in our family. It can be quite deleterious. The weasel peered at BB. Is there a life-affirming stage of book writing? Little Hedgehog asked, her eyes blinking sweetly. The weasel's eyes stared out at the middle distance. The day you hold your printed book in your paws, there's a certain joy in that. Little Hedgehog and BB grinned, imagining holding their book in their tiny paws. 
It sounds magical. It sounds confidence boosting. It sounds... Then the reviews roll in. That is, if you're lucky. The reviews? Honest appraisals of your work? The weasel shuddered at an unstated memory. Ugh, every time the fax machine comes to life, beeping and carrying on, spitting out an incoming review, it's like a punch to the gut. It is? What is a fax machine? The weasel shook her head as if it was simply too painful to discuss. You need a thick skin, a very thick skin, to publish a book. Little Hedgehog examined the skin beneath her prickles. How can you tell if you have thick skin? My mom always told me I have extremely thick skin to support my steel-like prickles. I use a special moisturizer each morning before I go to bed so that my skin retains water. The weasel broke from her middle-distance stare to peer at BB. She'd make an excellent character, she whispered to herself. She withdrew a tiny notepad from her pocket and scribbled something on it. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look. I must go, the weasel announced. She stood, packed up her typewriter, and strode off into the trees. When she was already out of sight, she called over her shoulder, her reedy voice emanating from the darkness. Forget your dream of writing a book. Buy a sailboat instead. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. BB, what just happened? I think she tried to discourage us from authoring a book. Hmm. hmm. Back at Little Hedgehog's burrow, they pondered how to proceed. They blinked and they pondered. They pondered and they blinked. After a while, they heard the unmistakable paw steps of Little Hedgehog's dad. He poked his head into the room and the smile on his face dimmed. You two seem a bit different than usual. What's up? Oh, Dad, we were planning to write a book. A very intriguing book. But then we met a weasel with a typewriter. And she told us about the Valley of Sorrows, also known as the editing process. And now we're not sure book writing is something we should pursue. Perhaps we are not cut out for it after all. Mr. Hedgehog smiled at his tiny daughter and her best friend. Well, I I'm happy to answer any questions you have about writing books. Aw, thanks, Dad. But I think we should consult an author with our questions. Yes, Mr. Hedgehog. We may need specialized knowledge to draw from for this endeavor. Mr. Hedgehog put a paw to his head. Wow, okay, uh, this is illuminating. He took a deep breath. Have you two, especially you, little hedgehog, ever noticed these? Mr. Hedgehog gestured a paw at the dozen or so nonfiction books resting on a nearby shelf. On all of the spines, the author was listed as Mr. Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog and BB's eyes grew wider than they ever had before. Little Hedgehog's dad was a writer, a successful writer. A feeling of complete and utter bewilderment enveloped them like a blanket. Don't you remember when I did that reading at the local forest meeting center? Oh, I do remember that. They had a saltwater fish tank. Bibi and I spent the whole time coming up with conversations between the clownfish and the anemone. <laughs> Mr. Hedgehog, is that what you are always doing when you are not drinking tea and napping and rooting through hedges? Yep. I spend a lot of time writing while you two are, well, getting up to whatever you two do. Little Hedgehog and Bibi smiled innocently. It's why I have the flexibility to get up and go on adventures with you once in a while. I write when you're asleep, most days. That's why you take naps every night? That's why I take naps. 
Whoa. Whoa. Mr. Hedgehog's writing advice was slightly different from the weasel's. For one thing, it was a lot simpler. Just start writing, he said. That's it? That cannot possibly be it, Mr. Hedgehog. (laughs) It's a good way to begin. Don't get so focused on the finished product right now. You have to practice writing. And you have to build your story. Like building a tiny house of toothpicks and balsa wood. Weirdly, yes. It's kind of like that. You start your tiny house with a foundation. You have to do the same thing with a story. What's the foundation of a book, Dad? Mr. Hedgehog thought for a moment. An idea. An idea! An idea. Yes, an idea. Little Hedgehog and BB peppered Dad with a few more questions. Will we really lose prickles during the editing process? No. Who told you that? Do you work on a typewriter? Yes, but I try to start out writing by paw. What is a fax machine? Until Mr. Hedgehog waved them off. I'm glad you've regained your enthusiasm, but I have to get back to work. Okay, Dad. Thank you for your sage wisdom, Mr. Hedgehog. Everyone in the burrow went off to write. Mr. Hedgehog retreated to the desk in his room. Little Hedgehog and BB huddled in Little Hedgehog's bedroom. They brainstormed ideas. An adventure novel featuring a porcupine who decides to climb Mount Everest. A coming-of-age tale about a salamander who goes on a journey to become a software developer. Until the sun came up. They fell asleep on a pile of papers, on a pile of ideas. The next night, they would pluck an idea from the bunch and get to work on it. For now, they slept on it. Ha ha! I have confiscated all remote controls. Ha! Such a relief to know they cannot fast forward me ever again. I cannot believe that. And the pygmy marmosets, too. Anyway, it's important for the studio spiders and beetles to know who's in charge here. You know what I mean? Moving on. Let's get to the stuff that really matters. Like our story. You know, I sleep on ideas all the time. It's a great way to let them marinate a bit. You should try it sometime. I hope you loved this story, and I hope it encourages you to begin your own story. As Mr. Hedgehog advised, you can start with an idea. An idea is like a seed, and with hard work and care, you might just be able to grow it into a story. You never know. Someday you could have a story garden, just like I do. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. My new picture book, Little Hedgehog Goes to School, is available now. You can find it by visiting littlestoriestinypeople.com forward slash books or by searching for Little Hedgehog Goes to School on Amazon. I hope you love it. Thank you to Sehej for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to my wonderful listeners who contributed sound effects to this story. Thank you to Majui, Mariam, Miles, Libby, Rachel, Naomi, Stella, Aurora, Ibrahim, Maxwell, Evan, Leo, Carlos, Zeke, Gideon, Amos, Megan, Marisol, Ellie, Lyndon, Noah, Ollie, Kendi, Shep, Wilson, Emmy, Sophie, Phoebe, Lydia, and Eloise. 
For this episode, I reached out to those loyal listeners who have subscribed to my email list. I sent out a request for lots of specific sound effects, and wow, did they deliver. You can sign up for my email list so you do not miss the next chance to participate. Just go to littlestoriestinypeople.com and scroll all the way down to the email sign-up form. All right, I think it's time for me to go sleep on some ideas. Thank you, as always, for listening in. <laughs>